Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today is a little bit weird since we're in the computer together, but I wanted to show you guys how my compost temperature tracker works. It could be a little bit confusing, so I just wanted to explain everything and show you guys how I use it. And if you guys have any recommendations or things you'd like to be added to this, let me know. Maybe I could add it to the file. Okay, so if you clicked on my link, you'll be able to open this file and view it. You're given view access. What you'll have to do is either make a copy or download it to be able to edit it and use it. So this is in Google Drive. The program is called Google Sheets. So that's what I used to create it. When you open up the program, it's going to say before use, click file. Okay, so you click file. Uh, you won't be able to see most of these things, but you will be able to either download it as an Excel file or one of these other formats, or you can make a copy. So you'll see it says click and make a copy or download as. Then number three, choose your drive folder or hard drive folder. So file, make a copy, then you can uh, create a title, whatever you want to call it, and then you can put it in whatever folder that you'd like, and it will be right there. And the advantage of having the file in Google Drive on Google Sheets is that you can look at it on your cell phone. And typically, I fill out all this information on my cell phone, actually. I usually don't do it from my computer. I do it outside because it's just really easy to change the thermometer to the next pile, measure that one and then input everything, input my notes, and then I'm done. Okay, so next it says number four is delete the top instruction and add sections by selecting rows one through nine on the left, right click and delete the rows. So I'm just talking about these rows here. You can select them all, right click, and then click delete. So, you know, you're just deleting what these instructions that I gave for you. Um, if you'd like to, you know, buy me a beer or a coffee and give me a small donation, if you end up using this file or you've enjoyed some of my content in the past, I'd really appreciate it. Any and all money I make goes back into creating more content and building a bigger, better farm that I can show you guys and teach more things about growing food. So I'll get rid of that first. So we're going to delete this. Okay, and then I also put, this is another little ad here, but it, you know, I'm only putting ads to try to help you guys. This is a really cheap, high quality thermometer. It's about 20 bucks. So there's a link for you if you'd like to pick that up. You can get it in Fahrenheit or Celsius. So delete those guys too. And now it's ready to use. So up here at the top, you know, is just the title, and then you're gonna see this little block. And this is just some simple instructions. It'll especially help you in the beginning when you're not really familiar with what the correct temperatures are and what's going on. So it's just kind of like a little cheat sheet. And it's color coded to help you see more easily what's going on and understand what's going on in the pile and kind of, you know, see some patterns. So zero to 100 is cold, 101 to 129 is warm 130 to 160 is the best it's hot so it just depends on what's going on in the pile and if you've watched my composting videos i touch on some of those reasons 101 to 129 that's when you're definitely going to be turning it and adding moisture and checking in the pile the most zero to 100 turn out moisture if necessary turn every five to seven days and then i kind of explain what's happening so at zero to 100 your compost is cooled off I give, you know, I give you guys some simple explanations of what's going on. Okay, next, um, I've just separated it into three piles because typically I'll have three piles at any time going on. Um, you could easily make more or less of these by doing this. Let's say you wanted to do four piles at a time. So you can do this and you can select the columns, say insert right. I'm gonna copy that. I select it all and copied. Select it all and paste. And then here's my new pile, pile four. Okay, so that's how you can create a new one. Um, you see these green, this green line here. If you want a spacer like that, you would just insert another column, shrink the column, and then you could give it a color up here. Okay, so then there's my pile number four, and we can keep going. So I'm just going to undo all that. Now let's say you want to delete one of these. It's very simple. I'll select the spacer row and all of these. Right click, delete columns. Now we've only got two piles. And then you can do the same if you only have one pile going at a time. That's up to you. 
I just wanted to show you how you can easily customize this thing. So now then going under the pile, so you, you know, pile number one, maybe you want to give it a name, a location name, something that um, allows you to know what differentiates each pile out in your yard. You know, of course you want to put the date, um, the ingredients, you know, we would put here, you know, chicken bedding, uh, manure, veggie scraps, leaves, bokashi, whatever it is, um, just track what you're, what you've put in there. You know, you could put your ratio, what your ratios were, things like that. Then you come down here and we've got the date left, middle, right, and then some notes. So the date, of course, you know, it's going to start on the date that you created the pile. Um, so if you want to, if you build a pretty big pile, it's a good idea to even measure different parts of the pile. And you can see, you know, if you built your pile evenly, they should be heating up very similarly. And it can also help you to determine if maybe a certain part of your pile is anaerobic. Maybe it's like, wow, it's really cold on the left side. What's going on? So you can actually dig in there and kind of smell and see if it's too wet maybe or, or whatever's going on to cause it to be so much cooler than these other areas. A lot of times though, I will just measure the middle and I'll just use this. Okay, so then each one of these cells has conditional formatting on it, which means whenever I type something, I type a number. So let's say we got a, uh, you know, we, we're at 90 degrees. Okay, that's an orange. It's zero to 100, right? So it gets an orange color. Let's say we're at 110 and it goes to that yellow color. Let's say we're at 140 and it gets that green color. And if you want to mess with the conditional formatting or something goes wrong, you right click, go to conditional formatting and it's over here. You can see the rules that I've set up, which are identical to these temperatures right here. And like I said, it's just to give a visual representation to kind of help you see what's going on. Here's a section for notes. This is where I would write pile created. You know, maybe on the fourth day I turned it, I added moisture, whatever else you want to say. Writing good notes is important because it may help you determine either what went right or what went wrong with your pile. So taking good notes of what's going on, what it smells like, all the different factors you might want to look at. Okay, then setting up a date. So I created this pile on 9-8-2018. Let's just say it's all deleted and you're going to be remaking these dates every time you do a new pile. That's the day I made the pile. So you create a date and then you see this little blue box. If you grab that with the cross mark and drag down, it will automatically input all the dates in ascending order. So there it goes. I've got all my dates and that's it. And that's all it takes. So let's just input some data here, guys. Let's just say we're just testing the middle. Let's say I went 140, I don't know, went back up because you turned it and now we're cold. Okay, let's say let's say the pile went cold here. Down here and we're done. Okay, pile ready to use. So now you want to get rid of this, right? You're done tracking it, but you want to keep this for your record so that you can look at, you know, what you did last year or what, you know, the ingredients that you used. Especially, you know, if you've got a really good pile that you've made, go back over those notes and what happened and when you turned it. If you had a really bad pile also, Go look at that and what happened. It'll really help you become a better composter over time. You know, I used to not measure compost, but once I started measuring, that's what really helped me level up my understanding of what was going on and how to address the different problems going on. And it, it just alerts you to things going wrong or going right in your pile. So now that I've got this finished one, all I need to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to select from the title here all the way down to the bottom and I'll just copy and take it to my finished compost tab down here. Now on yours, I put some instructions explaining exactly what I'm telling you right now. So you can just delete that and then you'll paste your pile here. And now there it is, you're done. So then, you know, next what you'll do is just delete everything here. Okay. Delete it all. You know, you'll need to refresh your date and your ingredients. And then, you know, maybe it's a month later and you'll need to make a new date and then you drag it down and then that's it. That's all it takes. Uh, so it's pretty easy to manipulate this thing. And I'll just continue to add pile after pile after pile all the way down. 
and you can just keep on um, checking them out. Now, the last tab here is examples. I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. These are a couple piles that I actually made. So here's what, you know, the records that I took and, and what it looked like. So you guys can kind of get a little idea of what it should look like. And this is what my finished compost page looks like um, after I keep adding each pile to the page. And then I've got my notes. If you guys would like to share this with anybody else, you guys can share this link right here and then people can download it themselves. And uh, you know, feel free to share this with anybody, guys. This is free, I want people to use this. If you have any ideas of how to make it better, I'd love to know. So thank you guys so much. If there's any other questions about using this document, just let me know and I'll answer them down in the comments. I hope it really helps you guys get better at composting, understanding what's going on in your pile and addressing the issues as they come along.